Good day folks, this is Bob back again. Today my subject is to talk about how destructive foreign policy run off Twitter, social media becomes for a country to get out of, right? What kind of disadvantage it creates, right? And this has especially been true for, for, for Maldives and it's also true for Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bangladesh. Bangladesh, when they have free and fair election, you can see how 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 that plays out. It's generally anti-India. You know, Sri Lanka was also run basically anti-India campaigns, and in the elections, so has Nepal, so has so has uh, Maldives. In almost all the cases, India is made out to be this bad guy, and and the opposition wins. That was the case of Yameen. That was the case of Rajpaksa. But you got to wonder why. When the bad guys were creating all this debt uh, problems for all these countries, whether it's Nepal, whether it is Sri Lanka, now it's going to be Maldives, is China, where have we failed? Why is it that we failed to create this same narrative? Why have we not been able to do it? Are we just not doing it because we are scared of China? I'm not so sure. Because it's clear, crystal clear that our strategy in all these three countries should be to create a uh, 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 undercurrent of anti uh, anti China, so that they can be free and fair elections, and not and not uh, gamed against India, right? Where we where do we lose, right? But that's not to say what these three ministers got up and said, right? I've always said Lakshwadi, and this is a presentation I paper I'd made to the powers in the NSA some years ago, that Lakshwadi is a serious counter to Maldives, right? We should develop in conjunction probably with, with Maldives, a set of resorts, competitive resorts, which, which put Maldives in a, in, 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 in a position where it's not constantly able to come and, come and uh, uh, debate with us and you know, throw out China. Same thing with Sri Lanka. For the longest time, we did not allow deep sea port uh, shipping to happen on the co on coastal India. The reason was because all this all this work was being done by uh, ports in in, in 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 Sri Lanka. So you got to know this that Humber Tota's economic livelihood is based on Hyundai's plant on the coast of Chen of, of Tamil Nadu because they come in they come in car the cars come in these ships they come to they come to Humble Tota where they're reloaded into these big ships because of, of because of uh, deep draft. But why didn't we have that? We could have deep drafted all these all, a number of ports on our coast and not allowed uh, Sri Lanka to hold the upper hand. But we did. Similarly, in, in Nepal, we've done the same thing, gone after it, especially on a religious and cultural issue. And, and there, as you understand, the, 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 the communist party that continues to be in power is not a religious party at all. In fact, religion is anathema to them, just like our communist party. Right? So, but when you run this, so this, what, the, those, those ministers were fired. They were totally out of place to do this. They should never have done it. They've been fired. But a lot of blame rests with us. Why did we lose this narrative? We had it for five years and we had done a lot of good work on the ground. Why did we lose it? Is there nobody in Maldives, just like there was nobody in Sri Lanka when the coup happened, telling us uh, uh, what's actually going down on the ground, but everybody else seemed to know except our people in, in power here. Something amiss. So, reduced inquiries, plummeting prices for vacancy in Maldives, Lakshadweeps, Lakshya Newport, more hotels, India not in a hurry to host Maldives president, probably shouldn't be. Amid remark Rao, Maldives explores Muizu's India visit, remarks against Modi, India raises concerns with Maldives envoy. And this is EU tells you this. EU report says anti-India sentiments were deployed during Maldives presidential polls. They sure were. I was hearing it from my people in Maldives, right? In China, Muizu calls Beijing a valued ally and China gets up and says we will not allow the, 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 the Maldivians to be pushed around by India. Well, that's, a, that's staring us and poking a, a finger in our eyes right there. And Rajnath Singh in the United Kingdom is saying that we, while we don't view China as an adversary, what do you mean you don't view China as an adversary? Of course, if that's the only reason why we are pussyfooting around China, right? LAC situation stable but sensitive, says Army Chief. 
Firmly oppose external interference in Maldives as China as Muizu and Strip. This is what I mean, right? An LAC situation stable but sensitive, says Army Chief. I'm not sure what he's saying, right? Strain in ties hit President's proposed visit to India. India summons envoys, turns heat on Maldives. India wraps Maldives envoy as boycott chorus rises. But this is what I'm saying. Boycott. Why would a general public want to boycott? This is because there's a troll army. There's the IT cell which wants to create the war. John Abraham, Salman Khan. Really, let's grow up, man. This is not foreign policy, right? Diplomacy in the digital public square, says Nishant Gupta. This dichotomy between India's position and brash social media campaigns underlines challenge for foreign policy in changing times. It absolutely does, right? But this is also what we have to be careful about because just remember ISIS bus cops on trail of Maldives. In Maldives, as a percentage of its population, has supplied the largest number of, of terrorists to ISIS, right? Now, why is Maldives are three key issues for India and for them. Okay, for them, location and matter for us, location and maritime security. He says Maldives proximity to the west coast of India, barely 70 nautical miles from Minokwe and 300 nautical miles from India's west coast, and its location as the hub of commercial sea lanes running through the Indian Ocean, particularly eight degree N and one and a half degree N channels, imbues it with significant strategic importance to India. It most likely does. Defense, it is the reason why India invests in on Maldives security by training its defense forces because Maldives could end up becoming a physical hub for terrorists to attack India, right? Then China, the China have also worked their way in the past 15 years. Maldives opened its embassy in the country in 2009. And this reason was the first time India faltered because the embassy was open the same day Manmohan Singh landed in, 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 uh, in Malay for the SARC. Uh, for the sark and 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 the disturbance that caused well that took a long time uh, a long time getting out of right upgrading ties with maldives china says it will help neighbors safeguard sovereignty maldives china signed 20 packs as muizu meets she modi discusses ties with mozambique timor lesti heads now this is very critical now if you see the physical map right maldives india in Mozambique, India has very critical relationships and that's how you control essentially the Arabian Ocean and the Indian Ocean against China. Right? Elections not, and with Bangladesh, right? Elections not free or fair, but will partner with Bangladesh as US. Bangladesh poll booth set on fire on election eve as opposition starts strike. Bangladesh PM says election free and fair. Hasina's party sweeps election, wins almost 75% of the seats. Here, folks. Voting percentage below 40%. It obviously can't be free and fair. It's obviously can't. But the United States, given into Indian pressure and because of China, has said it will still continue to support. But the war that we should be worried about, Maldives and the other is Myanmar. Myanmar rebels claim town on China border. It says, this is the China brief by James Palmer. The highlights this week, anti-government rebels in Myanmar target cyber scam operations along the border with China. She vows no mercy for corruption amid high level purges and Taiwan prepares for elections on Sunday. Myanmar rebels surge in China border region. Now this, folks, is the most important one. This week, anti-government forces in Myanmar took control of Lawikai, the capital of Kokkang region which borders China, an offensive led by the Three Brotherhood Alliance, which compromises several ethnic militias that began last October in the country's north, has been remarkably su successful, changing the balance in Myanmar's ongoing civil war. But just to remember for us, the same thing is happening in Mizoram. We had 150 soldiers cross over into Mizoram. Mizoram is in trouble, Manipur is in trouble, cookies, both sides are affiliated for uh, tribes in Myanmar. In fact, our Mizo uh, current chief minister is going ahead and said that the, the barrier that was created was all false. Militants fire at cops in Manipur, four injured. Villagers flee as gunfight in Manipur enters days two. Important. And the next big thing was the Bhutan election. Bhutan elects a new prime minister. He says, with democracy under assault across much of South Asia, Bhutan seems to be an outlier. It began a relatively smooth transition from traditional monarchy to democracy a little more than 15 years ago, courtesy India. 
But unlike the elections held in Bangladesh last Sunday and those scheduled in Pakistan on February 8, Bhutan's vote wasn't plagued by concerns concerns about rigging and un, and unlevel playing field. He says Bhutan's economy is suffering in part due to tourism sector still struggling to recover from COVID-19. The youth unemployment rate is 29% in a country and half of its population is under 30, old, 30 years old. Young people are leaving Bhutan in record numbers. This is very, very important and very, very unsafe for India because of China, right? Both runoff candidates made economic recovery the central pillar of the campaign. Bhutan's neighbors, especially India, can also help. Bhutan is flush with hydropower potential and energy deficient New Delhi would be a useful customer. India is already contributing to Bhutan's economy development through infrastructure projects, including recently announced railroad initiative. However, Bhutan's ties to India also make it a battleground for India-China competition and sometimes confrontation. In 2017, India and China clashed over Dokla border area claimed by both Bhutan and China. This week, India's NDTV published satellite images that it said show a Chinese military presence on territory claimed by Bhutan, right? Pro-India, Tobage said to be Bhutan's PM second time. And then Nepal. Nepal, we've always lost the plot because of, we continue, this government especially continues to think it's a last bastion of uh, Hindu Rashtra, while the communist parties don't think so. They, they just play us against China, right? Jay Shankar and Nepal pacting for 10,000 megawatt electricity export to India. India committed to redefining ties with neighborhood partners, EAM in Nepal, but we are losing the plot. I mean, we really am not sure whether we know what we're doing. EAM seems to be a lot more comfortable in the United States, in the West, in Japan, or as he says, the Quad and whatever, whatever uh, mythological name it gave it. India, Nepal sealed 10,000 megawatt hydropower deal for 10 years. EM discusses West Asia, Ukraine with counterparts, with Quad counterparts. And Pakistan is something you really like, I said, buddy. TTP blast kills six Pakistani cops in anti-polio drive. And as Tilak Tiveshwar writes, right? Baloch March shows Pakistan has not learned lessons from 19. A comparison with the situation in there, East Pakistan is inescapable. It was the oppression and exploitation of Bengalis that increased their alienation resulted in the eventual creation of Bangladesh. Like the Bengalis, the Baloch today are marginalized politically and shoved to the fringes in the imagination and policies of the ruling Punjabi elite. They are as much second-class citizens in Punjabi-dominated system as were the Bengalis. Pakistan has clearly not learned lessons from 71. And this is where China is also going to have hell to pay. But in, in the Middle East, the, finally, the Israelis, I think, have had enough. Don't say the Palestinians have had enough. I think the Israelis have had enough. Path to Palestinian state, best way to stabilize region, isolate Iran, says Blinken. Iran seizes oil tanker at center of dispute with the US of Oman. Modi holds roadshow with UAE president. How important I to you to, how important the Middle East to India is, actually shows up with all this, whether it's investment. And do remember, when we talk about India, UAE and key deals to strengthen I to you to block, Modi holds bilateral meets with CEOs on sidelines of vibrant Gujarat. Avoid further harm in Gaza, Blinken tells Israel. Then you have Blinken calls on Israel to build ties with Arab countries. Hezbollah drone strike hits Israeli base far from border. The US is worried that this should not go beyond where it is. And that's why Israel is beginning to pull back and actually without declaring it saying that. And I think Bibi's time as a prime minister is more or less over. India, UAE start direct talk trade in rupee dirham. How many of you know that rupee was the legal tender of the mid of, 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 of Dubai, the United Arab, Arab Emirates, late into the 60s, right? Blinken meets Palestinian president, discusses post for reform. Blinken seeks Palestinian governance reform, reform for post for Gaza as Israeli strikes continue. Yemen's Houthi launch largest Red, Red Sea strike. UNSC to vote on issue. Israel starts new phase of war with fewer troops and strikes. Top Hezbollah commander killed in suspected Israeli yet. Blinken meets Turkey Erdogan amid tensions. Israel Hezbollah exchange fire despite war spillover concerns. And India UK FTA dialogue to enter final stages tomorrow. This is very critical for India's growth is all the FTAs we are doing with the UK and the Australia and all that. Well, and then I have this Indo-French relationship when commerce meets romance. This is by Shobha Day. I can tell you that good old Macron is for sale. You buy a few, few, few Raphael, he is going to be chief guest for anything. 
right? And then what is C of the Buska restaurant? C of the Buska restaurant. Let's finish off with this. A note to security planners. Conflicts in the past two years, whether Ukraine, Russia, or Hamas, Israel, is illustrate the necessity to anticipate out of the box security exigencies. Okay. And then he says, India enters 2024 with a complex set of security challenges, both on the external front and the LICIS low intensity conflict inter inter internal security domain. The security postures of China and Pakistan individually and the strategic cooperation between them as also their support to non-state entities is an abiding challenge for Delhi. For both, we are being fingered by both China and Pakistan. Right? Furthermore, the probability that current Hamas Houthi churn could embolden groups in the subcontinent to advance the anti-India agenda remain high. The spike in terrorist violence in Jammu is illustrative. So you got to gear up, folks. We cannot, run, we cannot run foreign policy of social media, especially in our near periphery or at slightly outer periphery, which includes Middle East, because what's happening with this current election, right? Well, he said that, the, I mean, he's only noted Bangladesh as being a struggling uh, uh, election. I think India is also going to have to have, uh, is also have, going to have to be watched carefully because it seems that the, the, the focus seems to be shifting on religion. And in that, when you've shifted on religion, right, and the majority religion, who are your collateral damages? The Middle East, Pakistan, you don't care. Right? Pak uh, then let me just also end. In terms of a war threat, Pakistan's not it. Pakistan's not going to attack us. We are not going to have a war with Pakistan for the next five, six years. It's, first, it needs us and it needs the United States for its economy. Otherwise, like uh, Deveshwar said, Balochistan may just end up splitting from Pakistan. Right? What is our threat, India's threat? Militarily, it's only China. And I think we are forgetting that, especially with statements being made that I'm here with Rajnath Singh, dem uh, uh, demoralizing our forces, Jai Shankar, same thing. But the outer periphery, because of our domestic politics, where the collateral damage could be Bangladesh, could be the Middle East, could be countries like Maldives, could be any country that is essentially a Muslim country. So we got to be careful. Three cheers and Jain. As we go into the next year, we are looking at extremely, extremely difficult terrain that we need to maneuver into, uh, through in foreign policy. Jain.